So there was also a couple of things at the end of section 12.3 on the dot product that I wanted to go ahead and cover, and I ran out of time. The last thing that I had written um, on the board at the end of 12.3 were the direction cosines, which allowed us to find the direction angle. So recall that uh, cosine of the direction angle alpha, which is the angle between a vector and the x-axis, is a1 over the magnitude of the vector a cosine of beta is a2 over the magnitude of a and cosine of gamma is a3 over the magnitude of a so those three are the co uh, the direction cosines but the alpha beta gamma are the direction angles we can find using those particular formulas. Um, I wanted to point out here that there is a way to find a unit vector in the same direction as A. So if A is a vector, you know, and it has a magnitude uh, of magnitude A, absolute value of A, but that length may be non- uh, unitary, maybe not a single unit. So what you can do is u is the vector a, the whole vector divided by its magnitude, and you will have found a vector in the same direction. So for example, if your vector was 1, 1, 1, notice that the magnitude of that vector is the square root of 1 squared plus 1 squared plus 1 squared, which is the square root of 3. So u in that case would be that vector 1, 1, 1 divided by the square root of 3, or 1 over the square root of 3, comma, 1 over the square root of 3, comma, 1 over the square root of 3. Now, this vector here corresponds to this vector here in that they have the same direction, but this one right here is unit length, meaning that its magnitude is equal to 1. But what's interesting now is that if you take this guy right here and write him out, multiply in 1 over the square root, oh sorry, 1 over the magnitude of A into each component, right, because dividing a vector here by a constant scalar just means to divide each component by that and here's what I wanted to show you this guy right here this guy right here and this guy right here are all the direction cosines so the the elements of the unit vector in the same direction are also the direction cosines so if any of your problems ask you to find a unit vector in the same direction as a given vector, now you know how to do that, and it's based on those um, direction vectors. Let me, um, let me actually have us go through one example where we find the direction angles and direction cosines. So here's the example I wanted to do in class, ran out of time. A is 1, 2, 3. And the instructions say find the direction angles of A. Okay, so remember then cosine of alpha is A1 over the magnitude of A. So let's come off to the side here and do the magnitude of A. Magnitude of A is going to be the square root of each one of these squared. So 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 3 squared square root of 1 plus 4 plus 9, which is the square root of 14. So, square root of 14 right there. Now, if I do alpha is cosine inverse of 1 over the square root of 14, I actually get about 74 degrees. Cosine of beta would be 2, that's a 2 here, over the same magnitude, square root of 14, so beta, which is the cosine inverse now of 2 over square root of 14, is approximately, with my calculator, I get 58 degrees. And then cosine of gamma would be 3 
from here over the square root of 14. So gamma is cosine inverse of 3 over the square root of 14, or approximately uh, 37 degrees. And so there are your direction angles. By the way, this, this, and this are your direction cosines. Direction cosines, and here direction angles. And remember, the direction angles are the angle between the vector and its uh, each corresponding axis. All right, lastly, projections. This is what I didn't have time for. Um, the main thing I wanted to go back and make sure you've seen. So imagine that you have a vector, call that A, and a vector here, B. What I would like to be able to do is find out how much of B is acting in A's direction. So imagine that um, a particular object is um, constrained and can only move in the direction of A. So some block is attached to this thing, but it's on a slider and it can't move. But somebody pushes on this block in the direction of B, this direction here, the question is, how much of that force is acting in the A direction? So the way that we answer that is we do what's called a projection. We take the vector B and we drop a line perpendicular to A and we find what is this vector here. And I would call that vector the projection of B onto A. So I'll put A as a little subscript. Its length is sometimes referred to as the scalar projection, which might also be called the component of A, sorry, of B in the A direction. And the good news is we just got formulas. I'm not going to derive them for you, but they're fairly easy to derive. Um, you can see the text for reference, but the projection, um, the actual size or length of that is the easy, is the short formula you just do A dot B over the magnitude of the vector you are projecting onto. So here's formula number one, which we'll use, okay, that's called the scalar projection or the component of B in the A direction. Similarly, the projection vector then takes this guy here and scales a unit vector that's going in the A direction. So remember U, the vector that goes in the A direction that is of unit length is this thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this times that. And that gives me this projection here. It is A dot B over the magnitude of A squared all times, that's the scale, times the vector A. And so there's your other formula. Oh, there, projection. Okay, so let's, let's do one using those um, formulas. Let's say we've got the vector. Hold on, let me grab one from my book. B, example here, B is 1, 1, 2, and A is negative 2, 3, 1. I want to find the projection of B onto A. So the first thing that I do is find the component. Actually, I just, I'm going to go straight to the final answer, if that's all I'm looking for then I will do A dot B over the magnitude of the vector I'm projecting onto squared times A. So first I need to know A dot B, which is uh, 1 times negative 2, which is negative 2, 1 here times 3, so that's plus 3, so we did this, and now 2 times 1 is plus 2, 
gives me 3. I also need to find the magnitude of A squared, which is just 4 plus 9 plus 1, or 14. So I get that the projection here is going to be 3 over 14 times negative 2, 3, 1, or multiply that in, negative 6 fourteenths, which is negative 3 sevenths, um, comma, 9 fourteenths, comma, 3 fourteenths. And there we go. That's the projection of B onto A. All right, now you can do projections and scalar uh, projections. Fabulous. That's it.